100 femoral neck fractures treated with screws, you will find perhaps three or four with ideal position of the screws. So why do we use screws when we have such a small number of excellent positions? Why don't we go directly for what is iatrogenic? What, what are we doing and what is uh, really a complication? I have been this medical legal problem since more than 30 years and it is really very difficult to say this is a mistake and this is borderline and this is not a mistake. It's very difficult because of course we want to protect a little bit each other. We cannot blame every orthopedic surgeon when he fails from time to time. So, but here it's clear, you see, this fracture, <clears throat> obviously the surgeon did not realize the dynamics in this injury. It's a very critical fracture which runs up here, and this you cannot stabilize with screws. This will never be stable enough in this fracture. And if you do your corrections like this, put your blade into the hole, and over the hole, then you should not be surprised when you end up with a catastrophe. That is, uh, I collected these data about five years ago. I think it has not changed very much. The treatment of neck fractures is dynamic osteosynthesis, hemi prosthesis, total prosthesis, screw fixation, conservative. So, already 42% of the problems of femoral neck fractures are taken away by the arthroplastic surgeons. So we, the reconstructed surgeons, have only 60% to deal with. Maybe good or maybe bad, I don't know, because also with these implants, with these arthroplasties, we get a series of major complications. What has become clear over the period of time is that Reduction is that most important. That was said by Bratan very clearly. Reduction and a, a, a careful reduction. You should not turn around the head once or twice in rotation. A careful reduction. And for a careful reduction, I still feel the operation on a normal table is more careful than on a traction table. And second is, when we do the classical reduction maneuvers of lead bezel or whatever, the simple reduction maneuvers, pull, flex, rotate internally, abduct, and put the leg down. Usually it is reduced. If not, you can try it a second time, but then you open up and reduce it carefully with the joystick. So, good reduction and then a solid implant, whatever it is. I think that two screws is not solid. They have not grip enough. Either a DHS or I still prefer this uh, blade, this 130 degree blade, fixing it here with one screw only, an additional leg screw when it is a power two or three. Screws alone as implant need strong bone quality. So in young, bone, young people, two or three screws may be good. But in elderly, let's say 40, 50, 60, 70, I would choose a DHS or such an implant. And if you, if you manage to get this reduction, this position of the implant, you can be 95% sure that it will heal. The only problem is necrosis. Avascular necrosis is not in your hands. We are happy to see Professor Lau. And uh, the important thing is that you don't do any rotation and you keep the fracture plane not in a steep one, you have to transfer it to a horizontal one. Let's come back to this case. What shall we do? It's a clear non-union and it will not heal. You can wait another few months. The solution is always the same. As long as the head is alive, you do a valgus osteotomy. I come to that back later. What is important to prevent these failures which you have seen? You must be aware of the good reduction and often in, in power three you better do an overcorrection into valgus. 
you should be aware of the dorsal defects in the neck. If there are these dorsal defects, screws will fail. You need a strong ray blunt. You have to use a DHS or an angle stable plate. And sometimes a primary bulbous osteotomy is good. Uh, when there is a failure of osteosynthesis, you have to make sure that the head is vital. If the head is not vital, you straight go for a replacement. If the head is alive, you always should go for reconstruction, which is some kind of bulbous osteotomy. And if you have a, a necrosis, then you do any kind of a replacement, whatever you are used to. This is a case recently done. Sorry. The fellow came with pain, and uh, you see, uh, that is not reduction. The fracture line is still very steep. It's a Powell 3 line. <coughs> the screws are not good enough. And especially, the head is rotated. So you can wait months, it will never heal. So the solution is transpone the fracture line from into a more horizontal one, not completely horizontal, you can't do that, because that's too much bulbous, but about 30 degrees, and in the, in the axial view, in the Lauenstein view, you have to reconstruct it properly, and then you do the the intertrochanteric osteotomy that is here, the line, I cut through, transverse, and then I impact the proximal fragment into the distal fragment, so it gives rotational stability. Simple, straightforward, very easy. And this is after eight weeks. No necrosis, the fellow is not yet necrosis, the fellow is walking on it, full weight bearing, free function. So this is the best way out if you have a failure after any kind of osteosynthesis of an neck fracture. And this procedure has stood the test of time since many, many, many years. I think this was one of my first one in 74 uh, with the valgus osteotomy and 77, you see, congruity of the joint held to life. Again, such a case with screws, you see. I will not blame the screws. We have first blamed the surgeon because he did not reduce. This is not reduction. This is not reduction. Posterior dislocation. And if you have this, you as soon as you recognize it, take out the implants, go for a values osteotomy, and avoid to shift the shaft too much medially. Too much values will create problems in the knee later on. So do a decent valgus osteotomy and take care that you have the axial view deadlines. Lounge sign view must be perfect. Then the chance for healing is very good. The approach is a Smith Peterson, uh, uh, is a Watson Jones approach. Very easy, open the capsule, manipulate the head with the joystick into the proper position, and that's it. And then the valgus osteotomy, the procedure is done. Uh, you take a fixed angle, double angle, 120 degrees. You want a valgization of 30 degrees. That means you hammer in your chisel and your plate perpendicular to the shaft. At the end, the plate will stand away from the shaft 30 degrees. Then you uh, make your cut. You may take out of edge or not, not necessary, abduct the leg, abduct the femur, and fix it with screws. That's all. And take care, after having cut the osteotomy, that you don't get rotation. Very important that the knee, the patella, is looking to the ceiling and do it on an ordinary table. Put the patient straight on an ordinary table. See, if you want to do more, then you have to come from above, then you can do 50 other signs of vitality, you know? In an ordinary x-ray after four years, is that head vital or is it dead? What are the can improve the hold in the femoral head, reducing the chance of cutout. This goes in by compaction, whereas in a screw you need to tap it. This you hammer it, so it compacts into the bone. 
increasing support uh, increases supportive surface area, thus less chance of cutout. Now for the reaming of the plate, now what's the difference in this uh, technique of this procedure? The reamer is slightly different. I'll show you the comparison. The reamer is slightly different. It has a small. It, it is the. It doesn't have a long uh, reaming arm. Whereas in a normal screw, this is the reamer. This is a. This is the reamer for the VHS blade. And you hammer it inside, so as to compact and rather tap and you normally screw the VHS screw. Whereas the blade, you have to hammer it inside. I will show you a few cases. This is an 87-year-old female with unstable hip fracture, a DHS blade with an LCP DHS. And with the blade, you also have a LCP DHS plate, a barrel plate, where you, where you can put locking head screws because it's on the next day. In stable fractures, weight bearing, you can start within first week. If your reduction is proper, you have achieved good reduction and a good stable strong implant, you can start weight bearing within the first week. In unstable fractures, non-weight bearing walking with help of walker in 2-3 days, if the patient can do non-weight bearing, if the patient cannot, because a lot of these patients are old, they really don't understand how to non-weight bear, so it is better not to walk them at all than to uh, make them non-weight, start them with non-weight bearing and at the end of the day you understand that they are bearing weight on that leg. And weight bearing usually after four weeks you can start in such cases. In nailing cases, of course, you can start weight bearing early in, within the first ten days. In conclude, to conclude, stable fractures should be treated with a dynamic device and DHS is preferred. In unstable fractures, intramedullary as well as extramedullary devices can be used. Fracture reduction is of prime importance. Again, at the cost of operation, fracture reduction is what is more, which is of utmost importance in these cases. And accurate positioning of the implant is also important.